So, probably the biggest announcement from the last Nintendo Direct Mini was that the next DLC character for Smash Bros. Ultimate, the first character to be featured in the upcoming Fighter Pass 2 for the game, will be from ARMS. Uh, to say many people were disappointed in this would be an understatement. Plenty of comments about it being a wasted slot, which, let's be honest, we hear frequently about the Smash DLC fighters. There are always some people upset no matter who the character is, but many were mad about having such an unpopular substandard game featured. I mean, when you consider the other DLC characters we're talking about coming from titles like Persona 5, King of Fighters, Banjo-Kazooie, Dragon Quest XI, and Fire Emblem, and then you go to ARMS and it's like, oh, that's a weird choice. And with Nintendo also pushing this free trial to the game for online subscribers during the time, as well as hosting an online tournament for the game, it seems to me like they may be looking to make ARMS a thing again. So I wanted to take a look back at the game and see if it was really that bad, or are people just reaching? Now, before I even start talking about the game itself, I think it's important that we talk about the position it was in at launch. If we pull up that original year, the year one release calendar for the Nintendo Switch, we can see there wasn't too much in terms of what, at least what I would consider to be, major releases in those first few months the Switch was on the market. Luckily, we had what would be two sales juggernauts in Breath of the Wild and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe come out early, but both of those games were also made available on the Wii U. Now, while I don't think that hurt their sales on the Switch or anything, I think it kind of makes you look at the other two games, 1-2 Switch and ARMS, as the first big Switch exclusives. And 1-2 Switch was obviously at face value without even playing it, people could tell. Uh, wasn't going to be that mind-blowing of a game. Still, in my opinion, should have been a pack-in game with the Switch, given to all buyers for free. Uh, so I think that put ARMS in a weird place where it's like, you could do some mental gymnastics and kind of consider this to be the first big Switch exclusive, which was definitely not a position it was ready for. As soon as I started up the game and just looked at the cast of characters, this has to be one of the most bland fighting game rosters of all time. Uh, especially for such a small roster, I believe the game actually shipped with 10 fighters and then 5 more were added as free DLC over time, so you've got 15 fighters total and this is what you came up with? Yeah, besides like my booty queen Twintel, most are extremely forgettable or are like Helix and you wish you could forget about them. I mean, who, who approved this monstrosity? Good God. So many things wrong about this. So naturally, I picked Helix first to play through a circuit, uh, the arcade mode. I quickly noticed this game is extremely simple in terms of your actions. You really only have a block, a jump, a dash, two punches, a grab, and a special move. There really isn't much in terms of like combos or special button inputs for moves. Uh, you can sort of control the arms after a punch. Uh, since they go such a great distance, you can kind of weave them left and right. So there's a bit of nuance there, but input-wise, this is extremely basic for a fighting game. And that's because they made the game with motion controls in mind. You can play with a Joy-Con in each hand and actually punch like you're playing Wii Sports Boxing or something. And I do think the game is way more fun to play with those motion controls. You're not really losing out as much if you're trying to be competitive because even though motion controls obviously aren't going to be as accurate as putting in the inputs on a controller, since the controls are so simplified, you're not really losing much by going with the motion controls. The more complexity comes in with the different arms. You get obviously one arm on each hand, and there are dozens of arms for you to equip on your fighter that all act differently. You've got ones that shoot projectiles, ones that act as a wrecking ball sort of, and will just go through your opponent's arms if you both punch at the same time. It'll go right through their fists and hit them. So the mastering, I'd say, really comes from knowing how to use the different arms efficiently, as well as how to play against all the different types of arms. I did have fun trying out the different combinations, especially when you got a build that is just destroying your opponents. And I'd say there's definitely stuff here to put time in to improve as a player, but I can see why, for the typical fighting game player, there may not be enough here to keep them engaged. Again, I'm not saying this is just like a button masher or something, but 
there's not as much complexity here as with other fighting games. But I did notice there were also some weird match types when going through that circuit. There was like a basketball one where you tried to either dunk your opponent in the net or bounce them off the barriers into it, and you scored points rather than draining the opponent's health bar. There were also some break the target type ones. I figured this was just sort of like uh, little breaks between matches, but it would turn out this was a bigger part of the game than I thought. So after getting my feet wet, I wanted to go online and try to play some other people, test the online stability of the matches and that. I first tried to go into ranked because I find typically with older fighting games, a lot of the players that are still around are typically the hardcores and they're typically playing ranked matches. But I honestly, I couldn't find any. Uh, I made multiple attempts, even one time just searching for almost a half hour and nothing. So I got to thinking, Wow, this game must seriously be dead. Then I tried a player match, and almost instantly, I'm in a room with several other players. In these rooms, the game just randomly matches you up with other people, and you play various types of games. There's way more going on here than just the standard 1v1 matches. You've also got triple threats, where three people are trying to uh, be the last one standing, 2v2s, and there are more of these uh, different types of games, like a volleyball one that I really liked. There's uh, even a co-op one where you and three other people are fighting against a boss-like opponent. It felt way more like a party game here, and I honestly found myself having a lot more fun with the wackier modes. Even when doing kind of more standard fighting, I preferred the more frantic nature with the uh, multi-man matches. The game also ran uh, surprisingly smooth online, in my opinion, especially for a fighting game. Some dips here and there, and it also kind of has the benefit of not needing like frame perfect inputs. Uh, in something like Street Fighter, you know, a small stutter can cause you to drop a combo and change the whole outlook of the match. So even when there is an issue, it's not as noticeable in a game like this. The only issue I really had here is that there wasn't enough variety. Like the co-op stuff, there's just the one boss type and if you play that, you're fighting the same guy over and over again. Some I just found aren't as fun as others. So I feel like the biggest issue with ARMS is it has a bit of an identity crisis uh, where it tries to be both a competitive fighting game and a party game and as a result, it feels heavily lacking in both aspects. Uh, the fighting game mechanics aren't deep enough to keep someone who is a hardcore fighting game fan engaged and similarly, those wanting to play it more casually as a party game aren't going to feel like there's enough activities to do. I mean, when you think of a party game, you think of, you know, dozens and dozens probably of different little games to play with people. And, you know, there's only a handful in here. I think two things could have really helped with this. Uh, however you slice it, I do not think this feels like a $60 game. Just not nearly enough content. Again, the rather small roster and just not enough things for you to do. Uh, I think launching this at $30 would have made it much more attractive, especially in the early days of the Switch when there weren't many options. I do think because of that factor, because there wasn't much else out, the game sold decently well, but uh, definitely didn't set the world on fire or anything. But I think a lower price tag would have made it attractive enough to have a lot more people just buying it to have another game to play. And regardless, it should have at least gotten a price cut by now. The fact that today, it is still $60 on the eShop is just crazy to me. I know Nintendo doesn't like to discount their games, okay, I'm aware, but some need to be discounted. Not all your games are Mario's and Zelda's, okay? Some of them are ARMS. So it's like, come on, three years later, still trying to get $60 for this game? Insane. But also, I think it needed to make more of a decision on what it wanted to be, as well as communicate that more clearly to customers. Personally, I think this feels way more like a party game, and that should have been the focus and the sales pitch, rather than trying to position it like it was going to be Nintendo's Splatoon of the fighting game genre, right? Giving them a foothold in the genre like Splatoon did for them with shooters. And given my experience with the online, I'd assume a lot of people still playing it would probably agree. Again, considering I couldn't even find a ranked match, which I assume in the ranked you're strictly 1v1 fighting, yet there's plenty of people to be found in the more party-style player matches. All in all, I, I don't think this is really a bad game, uh, but more so it had an identity crisis, being positioned as a big Switch exclusive at a time where there wasn't even much to play, so there were a lot of eyes on this game and I could see why people would say this one doesn't really hold up. 
but I think there is potential in this idea. I did have some fun while playing this game. If Nintendo is planning, like, uh, an ARMS 2 at some point, I hope they lean more into the party game aspect, and if they give people enough content, maybe some more interesting character designs while we're at it as well, I could see them pulling this off. Anyway, with that, this video's a wrap. Let me know your thoughts on ARMS in the comments. Have you played this game? And do you think it's as bad as everyone says it is? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this look back in ARMS. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you want to keep the conversation going, hit me up on Twitter, at Johnny Zakari. And join my Discord, Shy Guy and Friends. Link to both in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching.